Good morning, Christian. Good morning. Let me get this fixed up here. All right, there we go. Could be just you and me, buddy. But we'll see. All right. This definitely wasn't a, a couple of chapters for procrastinators. What's that, Christian? I'm sorry. Oh, this definitely wasn't a couple of chapters for procrastinators. I mean, <clears> that, <throat> that module six especially is a lot of uh, a lot of writing out each step there. Yeah, sure, sure is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the the assignments and the practice quizzes and the credit quizzes and. Uh, Give a give you a good idea of some tips to get through those. All right, it's eleven o'clock. We'll get started. All right. Uh, thanks for putting on on your video. I appreciate that, Christian. No problem. Okay, let's get started with the assignment here. out as well. Okay, so when you're given a, a problem like this, asking for the sum of coefficients, there's a video here in the video tutorials as well that goes through this. But for this one, I'll just make it super clear. So the, the way to balance this would be to put a two in front of the HCL and then we have two hydrogens and chlorines on each side. The sum of coefficients would be 1 plus 1 plus 2 equals 4. So even though the there is no 1 shown here, we're assuming it's there. And that's how you should do sum of coefficients for anything. So there's a whole bunch of those that are like this. So sum of coefficients, just add them all up and then you come up with the answer. Any questions so far? Looks like a couple of other people have joined us. That's good. And I, my, I have my preference here would be that you show your video, please. It's my preference. I'm not going to force it though, but uh, I'd like you to show your video, please. Are you recording this one by any chance? I, I am. I am Danielle. Here. I am Danielle. Awesome. They're going to come rekey my lock soon. So if they come, I might log out and have to rewatch yeah. it. No, that's OK, Danielle. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I always always record these and then put a link in the Zoom folder and it's to a YouTube video. OK. Awesome. Thank you. There's uh, also these hydrocarbon balancing and I want to give a little just a little couple of tips on those. Whenever you're doing hydrocarbons, we're talking about compounds of carbon and hydrogen. There's really two possibilities. They always have the formula CXHY. And in situations like well, C2H4, for example, We'll go ahead and I'll balance that and then I'll give you another example and you'll see the you'll see the difference between them. Okay. So C two H four plus O two gives CO two plus H two O. 
So the two goes in front of the carbon here to balance the carbons. Now the hydrogens, we put a two in front of there. The oxygens are a little bit more difficult because we've got two times two is four plus two is six, which means a three would go in here for the O2. And the sum of coefficients would be one plus three plus two plus two, which would be a total of eight. So that one's not too bad. Now, if we did something, does anybody have any questions about that one? Now take a look at something like this though. We'll go C3H6 plus O2 gives CO2 plus H2O. So we do the same thing. We'll put a three in front of CO2 and we'll put a three now in front of the H2O. So this comes out to be six on the hydrogen. Now, if you look at the oxygens, we've got three times two is six plus three is nine. So to balance the oxygens, we really need to do nine divided by two, nine over two, because you've got the O2 over here, but that's a fraction. So we need to multiply that by two. We get two C3H6 plus nine O2 gives six, CO2 plus 6H2O. And what all I've done there is just multiplied everything by two. And if you do that, you can see we end up with six carbons, which matches, 12 hydrogens, which matches. And then the oxygens, we've got 18, and then we've got 12 plus six is 18. So the oxygens all balance as well. But what I'm saying here is that if you look simply at the hydrogens and you take the hydrogens and divide by two, and if it's even, there's no multiplication by two, and if that result is odd, then there is multiplication by two. So you'll notice in the top example, I didn't multiply by two. In the bottom example, I did, and that's because of when we look at the hydrogens, four divided by two is two and six divided by two is three. So if it's an even number, you won't need to multiply by two. If it's an odd number, when you, when you divide by two, then you will have to multiply everything by two. Does anybody have any questions about that? So that's, that's just, just a, for hydrogens, right? I'm sorry? If the hydrogen is an odd. No, no, if the hydrogen divided by two, if the result of that is odd you have to multiply by two. So six divided by two is three and that's an odd number. Is that okay? okay. Thank you. So that can be kind of helpful with those. Let's look at uh, number 16. And what it's looking for is the single ions that make up compound A. But you have to be you have to be careful about what is meant by here single ions. So let's uh, let's go ahead and, and look at that. Whenever I'm doing these kinds of problems, what I like to do is I like to split them up into their ions. So it'd be Na plus and OH minus. And for H3PO4, it would be three H pluses and PO4 three minus. So what's going to happen here is the OH minus and the H plus are going to join together. That's going to give water and the Na plus and the PO4 three minus are going to join together. The single ion that they're looking for here, if you look at the choices, is going to be the PO4 three minus. That would be the answer based on what I've got over here. And when you're doing these, it's really important just to take one of each to join them together. I mean, I, I will continue on with this, but we'll have Na plus joining with PO4 three minus. Compound A then would be Na3 PO4. 
the logic there is that we need three NAs in order to balance out the three negative on the phosphate. Does anybody have any questions? So single elements is what's important there. So for this one, this is the same reaction. The single element they're looking for is Na plus. And that's a single element right there. Any questions? All right, I'm looking for another one here. Let's see if there's another example I can show you. No, I think they're all pretty much the same thing, really. Except for maybe this one. Okay, I'll do this one here. So you got MgOH2 and H3PO4. So we've got three. And I'm going to put that on the outside here. MgOH2 would look like this. So Mg2 plus and two OH minuses. And then we've got two H3PO4s. So I like this approach of kind of putting them in boxes. H, 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 and then PO4, three minus over here. And if it's looking for, if it's looking for the single element here, it's just this one here, Mg2 plus would be the answer. Doesn't matter, but there's three of them. So make sure you choose the right one here. All right, so that's what's meant by single elements. I think this is a good one to do as well. This is number 26. And we're looking at AgNO3 and FeBr3. So we split this into ions. We'll have Ag plus NO3 negative. We know it's Ag plus because NO3 is a negative one and we can get that off the polyatomic iron sheet. On the other side, we've got Fe and three BRs. And that would be negative one on each of those, which makes the iron three plus. Does anybody have any questions about any of this so far? As we go through these uh, double replacements, mm -hmm. I do have a question on when we get the coefficient for like what would be the okay. solid one. Okay. Let me, um, let, I, I, I'm, that's another place. Do you, do you mind if we wait on that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So these are single ions for this will be Ag plus, NO3 minus, Fe3 plus, and Br minus. Notice I don't do all three. So I'm just circling one of each. These are the single ions. And the reason we focus on that is we know that at the end, the Ag plus will join with the Br minus and the Fe3 plus will join with the NO3 minus. Let me get rid of this up here. I'll move all this other stuff up. And that means that the compounds would be from Ag plus and one Br minus to give AgBr. And then you can see the importance of just, of just taking one of them here. And then we've got Fe3 plus and NO3 minus, and that compound would be Fe, NO3, and three. Because we need three NO3s to balance out the Fe3 plus. 
Anybody got any questions? So a lot of them are like that. I'm just trying to clarify exactly what I'm looking for in those questions. A lot of them are like that. So these are all very similar to those questions. Again, single ions is what you're looking for. And it helps, I mean, it does help to do that because it really does clarify exactly what you're looking for in these problems. Okay, I think that's, I'm just trying to see if there's anything left at the end here. With the with these kinds of ones here, the decomposition reactions, if you've when you when you read through this, this is in, this is in the in the soft chalk. Anything. it's XClO4, even XClO3 will turn into XCl, some sort of compound with X that's got a chloride plus oxygen gas. So we have to figure out what X is. Now in the case of CuClO4 2, we know that ClO4 is a negative one. So it's a negative one charge. Same with ClO3. What that means is that copper is two plus. Does anybody have any questions? So when coming up with the XCl, we know it's going to be a combination of Cu2 plus and Cl minus. The answer here, by the way, would be Cu2 plus as the ion that it's looking for, but the compound would be CuCl2 because we need two chlorines to balance out the two plus on the copper. And then you could balance it from there. So the equation then and then uh, we've got, well, the coppers are balanced, the chlorines are balanced, the oxygens though, we've got eight and we need four O2s that would balance that out. Does anybody have any questions for that one? All right, so that's the assignment. Did anybody have any other questions about the assignment? Okay. Yeah, it's not one you want to leave to the last minute. Definitely not. I just want to see how many people we got. So, okay, so a few people. Okay. Let's. I'm going to go through the practice quiz here, and I'm hoping, Christian, I'll, I'll answer your question now. Uh, that you are, and if I don't, you yeah, feel free to ask it again. Okay. No, you're, you're definitely well. I did the practice test and that was where I came across them. Okay. But I'm going to go through test two as well. So. Okay. If there's a specific question from the quiz that I need help on, is this, am I allowed to do that now or is, am I not because there's still students that well, uh, no, no, you, um, you can you can ask, but I'd, I'd prefer you wait till the end, okay? If you've got okay. something specific. Okay. So just, just let me get through this stuff first, and then at the end I'll take questions that, general questions any students might have, okay? 
Yeah, no problem. So we've already been through the sum of coefficients here and the hydrocarbon balancing. All right, let's talk about this with the full ionic equation because this is something, so Christian, I think this speaks directly to what you're talking about, right? Or not quite, maybe not. Yeah, no, this is a, the type of problem where it arises from. Okay. So this is what I recommend for, for this kind of problem. If you're looking at the full ionic equation, the, the key here, and this is really, this is what's really important. You've got this, these different compounds, some of them have AQ and some of them have solids next to them. Now these equations in and of themselves are balanced. So you don't have to do any balancing here of the actual equations themselves. But it's really important to take note of what's solid and what's aqueous. Now solid means it's solid. Aqueous means it's an aqueous solution, it's dissolved. So in a solid, if you've got a solid in a solution, you'll see it as a precipitate, that would be solid. But if you've got an aqueous solution, it's a very terrible drawing. It's going to look like this. It's going to be completely clear. There's not going to be any solid in there. That's important to note. So when we're doing the ionic equations, anything aqueous, because it's aqueous because it splits into ions. And this is the important part, solids do not split into ions. That's because they're solid. And this is the most common thing that people forget, I think. So when we're looking at the, the ions here, the FeNO33, if I drew a picture of it, would look like this. I could put charges on if I want to. I actually don't have to, but I can. And I should because it's an ionic equation, but uh, you don't really need the charges. So total up the, the, total up the particles you're getting there because it's aqueous, you're getting four. Is anybody, does anybody have any questions about where I'm getting the four from? Now, in the case of three NaOH, I'm going to say it's like three boxes of Na and OH, and it's going to be Na plus and OH minus. The total number of particles there is six. Anybody got any questions about that? Actually, that should be Na and O3 down here, I guess. Yeah. Any questions? The FeOH3. That's just a one because it doesn't split into ions. And for the three NaNO3s, the total there is six as well. So the sum of the coefficients would be four plus six plus one plus six, which would be 17. Does anybody have any questions? So if for the solid, the precipitant, mm. if it already has a coefficient at the front, we keep that throughout the- You would, end stage, you right? would, you would Christian, yes. If it was a two, okay. you keep it as a two, but you wouldn't split it apart like we did the other ones. Okay. Because it's a solid. What's that? Is that all right? All right, any other questions? Okay, let's look at the net ionic equation. Now, if I was to, to go ahead and do this from the full, I mean, it's the same thing here, but what I would do is I'd cancel out what was exactly the same on each side. I'm going to go ahead and, and write out the, the full ionic equation. 
just so you can see it in all its glory anyway. And then I'll show you how you would possibly get, but I'll show you an easy way of getting the, uh, the net ionic equation as well. But this is the full ionic equation. It's going to be Fe3 plus plus three NO3 minuses plus uh, let's see, three Na plus plus three OH minus. This is where the six comes into play. And that gives FeOH3 solid plus three Na plus plus three NO3 minus. So that's the full ionic equation. Now the net, to get the net, I can cross out whatever's the same on both sides. That would be the sodiums and the nitrates. And all I'm left with is Fe3 plus plus three OH minuses. So the full ionic, sorry, the net ionic equation then, the coefficients would be one plus three plus one is five. So a total would be five there. The sum of coefficients. But I'm going to show you an easier way of doing that. Does anybody have any questions about this so far? I have one question. Yes, Kirsten. Um, so for the NaOH at the beginning of the equation, mm -hmm. it's six because there's three of yeah, each. But that's right. Yeah, that's where the six okay. comes into play. That's right. Because it's three okay. Na pluses and three OH minuses. Think of it like a box, okay. three boxes of an apple and can each containing an apple and orange. Then you're counting apples and oranges. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Any other questions? All right, let me show you an, another way that you can, you can get the net ionic equation. See, the net ionic equation, if you, if you looked at the, the example I just did, it really is just what's forming a solid. And if you were asking the question, what forms a solid? Well, it's made of Fe and how many OHs? Three. You can put charges on if you want to, but you'll see it's one plus three plus one, which equals five. Couldn't be much easier than that. I wonder how many people are going to watch this Zoom session. It's certainly hurting themselves if they don't, I think. But does anybody have any questions about that? So, so Christian, do you see that as being an easier way, perhaps of getting the sum of coefficients for the net ionic equation? Well, that way it definitely works. Um, I'm, in my own notes, I've been writing out the full Right. Uh, I have this equation and then just crossing out yep. the net. Yeah, well, you can do that too still. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing stopping you doing that. But this way is, you know, half the time to get the same product. Right. I've been doing the same thing Christian's doing. It's just taking so much time. Right. Uh, you just explain what you did one more time there again. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the equation here. Do you see how I, I just focused on the solid, Courtney? Yes. And I just looked at what made up the solid, and it's just one Fe and three OHs. So you just found the charge. Actually, I didn't even really need the charges, to be honest, to be completely yeah, honest. You don't, because it's just the coefficients, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's that one. everything? Sorry? That always works. Yeah, as long as you focus on the solid, Courtney, yes. Oh, man. Okay. So if we're being, okay, okay. Coefficients. It's not really a shortcut per se. It's a recognition that, yeah. the, that the net ionic equation is really only about the solid. Because everything else just cancels out. I have a question. Yeah, Kirsten. So um, what's the difference between number three and number four? Well, in number three, it's the full ionic equation. Okay. Which is every single ion here 
it, regardless of whether it's the same on both sides. So if it, this has been a net, I'm going to write the full again, just for the, for the sake of clarity here. And oh, okay. Fe3 plus plus 3 NO3 minuses plus 3 Na pluses plus 3 OH minuses gives FeOH3 solid plus 3 Na pluses plus 3 OH minuses, uh, 3 NO3 minuses, sorry. And yeah, if you did if you did the sum of the coefficients, one plus three plus three, it's going to be the same. It's going to be seventeen plus mm -hmm. one plus three plus three, which is seventeen. So that's the difference, net and full. Okay. Is that okay? okay? So number, yeah. So number four, number four is the net ionic, right? Yeah, this one says full. Do you see? And then okay, so number three is the full. And number four is the net. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it says it. It says it. Yeah. And then um, number four is just concerned about the solid, you said? Well, yeah. I mean, if you you can do it from the full Kirsten, and mm -hmm. what, what you would be doing is crossing out the sodiums and the nitrates, which are the same on each side, and okay. you still get Fe3 mm -hmm. plus plus three, which is you know, the net up here, you see? But what I'm saying is you don't even really have to do that. You can just say, well, let's look at what what's making up the solid. Uh -huh. Because it's just a recognition that anything aqueous is going to cancel anyway. Okay. Anything that's okay. aqueous on both sides, yeah. All right, any other questions? Okay. And now looking at the single displacement when you go through this, it's really a matter of, you don't need, sometimes people say to me, well, what about the activity series? Do I need the activity series to solve this? The answer is no, you don't. Because what you're doing here is you're using this kind of rule. You're saying uh, if the, neutral, is more active than the cation, a reaction will occur. If the cation is more active than the neutral, a reaction does not occur. So you just have to be able to determine what's neutral and what's a cation. So in the example of Ag solid plus PbNO32, the Ag is the neutral because it doesn't have a charge on it. And the Pb is Pb2 plus, that's the cation. Anybody have any questions about that? What I mean by neutral and cation? So is it always the separate solid is it going to be the neutral? Yeah, the one doesn't have a charge on it, Christian. OK. But you, you need, you'll see that the PB does have a two plus charge because it's with the two nitrates, which are negatively charged. So that's why it's the cation. But look at what happens here. The observation says no changes. That is, essentially means no reaction. So if this had anything in there of like a, a changing color, a, uh, precipitate, uh, gases, bubbling, that kind of stuff, then yeah, you know a reaction's occurring. But because of that, since since then no reaction is occurring, then you know that the cation is more active than the neutral. So the the answer the answers here would be no for a reaction. The neutral element is still silver. 
the cation is PB2 plus. The more active one is going to be the PB and the less active one is going to be the silver. So those would be the reactions there. Oh, sorry, that would be the answers there. So the observation would tell us if there is something, if there is a reaction that occurs? Yes, that's right. Okay. And so if there's no reaction, it'll say no changes or something like that. If there is a reaction, then you'll see some sort of observations that suggest a chemical reaction occurred. Okay. And that tells you again the order of which one's more active and less active in accordance with what I've written on this slide here or on this page. And the cation is always the part that's in the larger compound, the first part? Yes. Okay. Well, it's always the solid. The cat, sorry, the, the, sorry, the cation, sorry, the cation is always the aqueous. Yeah. Okay. The cation is always the aqueous, yeah. All right, any other questions? Okay. When you're trying to find the compound A here in an acid base reaction, I kind of went through this a bit earlier, but I'll go through it here as well. What I like to do is, is draw out what these look like as pictures. And then we've got HCl, so it's H plus and Cl minus. I know that the OH minus joins with the H2O as the, with the H plus that forms H2O and you can see it there in the, in the question as well. And then we're going to have SR2 plus and Cl minus adding together. So kind of like insides and outsides really. And then I have to come up with the formula that balances that. So it'd be SRCl2. The question I'm asking there is how many of each do I need to make that balance out to positive and negative charges? Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, and in the questions like question seven, you'll see it's probably split into two different questions, but it might not be the same thing either. All right, so for this one, it would be AgNO3 and Fe and Br3. Does anybody have any questions so far? So now we need to figure out what compounds A and B are and it will be the result of Ag plus joining with Br minus, just one of each, and the NO3 minus joining with Fe3 plus. So the two compounds, Ag plus and Br minus, just one of each, right? And that'll be AgBr. And then the Fe3 plus and the NO3 minus, that'd be Fe NO3, 3. So you'll notice that this question here must be about the Fe NO3, 3. That would be the answer that was being looked at there. And the other one is looking for AgBr as the answer. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Yes, Kirsten. So um, I noticed this question type. It's like you can select multiple. Is that just like? Useful? Well, in, in this instance, there's only one answer for each. It's been split apart into two, two questions. Uh -huh. actually. Do you see? Yeah. So it's only really, even though it says, even though it's multiple select, Okay. It really is only, it says one of compounds A or B. It's okay. specifically looking for one in the question. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
And the last one here, I think it's the last one. No, it's not the last one. Uh, RBCLO3 plus heat gives compound A. So what you're looking for is you've got ABCLO3 and heat. And I showed you this earlier. It gives, it's going to give some compound of RB and CL plus O2. And what we're looking for here is this compound. So for this, we need the charge on RB, which is going to be ClO3 is negative one, which makes RB one plus. So it's RB plus and CL minus, and that combination would be RBCL. So ClO3 has a negative one charge and ClO4 also has a negative one charge as well. Does anybody have any questions about that one, number nine? Okay. Number 10, I think, yeah, all the way through to 13, these are pretty much the same question. Again, it's kind of, they are multiple selects, but I'm really looking for just one of the ions here for each of these. So it would be, the ions would be found by splitting, splitting these up, drawing out pictures. So FeNO3, 3, 3 is negative, 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 and three plus on the ion, on the ion and then three NaOH, so three NaOH, negative one and positive one on the sodium. So the single ions would be Fe3 plus NO3 minus, notice I just pick one of them because it's only asking for the single ions, Na plus, and again, just one of them and OH minus. So those would be the answers for all four of those. And it should go through from 10 to 13. Okay, does anybody have any questions about those? All right, does anybody have any other questions about the practice quiz? Okay, so that's module six. Uh, I'm going to ask if any students have any module six related questions here. I wanna keep in mind this, I have to keep this to an hour because I've got another Zoom session at noon for a, for a different class. So I'm going to, but I can still take some questions here before I take a quick run through the test two here. Does anybody have any questions? Kirsten, did you still have any questions about module six? No, I think you covered them. My main question was just about the coefficients. Okay. Yeah, I figured um, that. Yeah. Uh, I, I figured once once I go through that, generally people are are okay with it because it's a lot easier than what you originally think it is. I did have one question about the module six quiz, but it was a coefficient question. Yeah. Um, so I, I should I just watch the beginning of the Zoom because I missed the first ten minutes of, of Zoom. Well, there's a video. Let me show you the video for the sum of coefficients. I'll show you where it is called. I get the, I get the, um, you, you, you get the concept. Well, okay. I get the concept. I guess maybe it's just when there's lots of numbers, I get a little overwhelmed. There was just a, yeah. <laughs> was it a balancing question more than a sum of coefficients question? It was the sum of coefficients of the full ionic equation, but the I, the equation, the balanced equation that's given is like just larger. So I just found it difficult breaking it down into the full ionic and then finding the coefficients. That's where I get tricked up. Right. Yeah, I, that's something I, I covered at the beginning of the lecture. So okay. you might have just missed that part of it. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So what I'll do, if I have time, I'll go back to it, okay? But okay. Let's, let's take a look at the, we'll take a look at the test here. Now remember, you can take the test any time up to the due date. I'm hoping people are aware of that. You don't have to wait until the day it's due. 
Now, according to the syllabus, You've got uh, module six is due on February 28th. So that's four days from now on the Sunday. The extra, the, uh, sorry, the test two is due on Wednesday of next week. There's extra credit possible for you to get as well, but that closes on Tuesday. And the extra credit is from getting 80% on practice test two. If you can get 80% on practice test two, you can get those, you can get that extra credit. And generally what I find is maybe half the class does it, which I think is crazy because it's, you have to take practice. You have to do the practice test anyway. I don't understand why people don't do it. You know, before it's you, yeah. Sorry. Um, so the practice test and the extra credit are both due on the second, correct? No, well, well, yes, I'd say that's true, well, but you know, the actual test itself is not due to, to a third. Yeah. I just want to make sure I had the practice test. Yeah, well, when I, when I say you need 80% on the practice test be, but by March 2nd. Okay, thank you. Is that, is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So for test two, there is a study guide and you should look at that. This will give you an idea of the kinds of questions you'll see. So uh, quest, test, test two, you can see the naming, naming compounds and the naming compounds module five and then balancing reactions and all of this. So these are the, you know, these are the, the kinds of questions you should expect. And that gives you, so completely transparent, you know, I'm not keeping in anything secret here. So that's the study guide. You can look at that. Uh, what else have we got? So let's look at practice test two. Remember that test two is the same test. It's the same test. I'll say it again, it's the same test. Why, why wouldn't people do the practice test to study for the real test? It's the same test. I'll say it again, it's the same test. Just one more time, it's the same test. I don't know if people believe that. I think they think, they, I think, they think I'm holding something back or something, I don't know. But. No, it was uh, remarkably helpful last time when you said that. And I just took the practice test and then the same test on the same day. Oh, right. But you could have taken the practice test the day earlier and gotten 80, gotten 80 percent and then gotten some extra credit. Right, Christian? No, I did them uh, a week ahead. Oh, OK. Well, good. Then, you know, you should do the same thing this time if you can. You know. I would. All right. So the so the. The test here, as I said, is it's got five where you have to go from the uh, the formula to the name, and then five where you're going from the name back to the formula. And then you've also got the questions related to module six, which have the single ions. These are very similar to what we went through in the practice on the on that practice quiz. It's very similar kinds of kinds of questions. We've got a balancing question here, a hydrocarbon balancing question. All of this was laid out in the in the study guide. Then you've got the acid base reaction here and the compounds. The acid base and the double displacement and the full ionic equation, just like we talked about, net ionic equation as well. And actually, yeah, I, uh, let's uh, let's I uh, will look at number 29 here that, that can be sometimes confusing to people so I'll look at that and then number 30 so let, let's look at number 29 here specifically all the other ones we've covered in the practice in the practice uh, quiz that we just looked at this one here is a little bit different so for this one it's XClO36. The recognition has to be that we're forming some kind of chloride XCl plus oxygen gas as the products. Uh, 
but we need to figure out what this chloride is. And we're looking for the sum of coefficients here. So what's going to happen is it's going to be X and then to find the charge on the X, I need to use the charge on the chlorate or the, yeah, the chlorate, one, two, three, four, five. Negative, 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 six of them there. Negative six, which means that the X has to be plus six. So the X compound would have to be six plus and then CL minus, which would be X CL six. Does anybody have any questions so far? So this is always going to split into O2 as a gas and then I'm yes. just looking for something to balance the CL. That's right. But this is all in accordance with the soft chalk as well. So when looking at this, we've got X is balanced. The CLs are balanced. We've got 18 oxygen. So we need a nine in front of the O2. The total there would be 11 sum of coefficients would be one plus one plus nine. What's right next to the O2? It says O26. What is that? Gas. Right it's a gas. Gas. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So that can be anything from, you see, if, you, if you're looking to shortcut it here, whatever's here, the number of chlorates or perchlorates will always be whatever the charge on X is. Because it's a negative one, so it has to even out. Does anybody have any questions? So your total coefficients are always going to be when you write out the full equation and then it's going to be the 18 or? Is it always going to be 18? Well, I mean, is it always going to be the, um, the subscript there, the underscript? No, no, it, because they, these have ones in front of them. They're just not being counted or not being seen, I should say. So it's one plus one plus nine. So it's 11 would be the answer. But I'm not sure I understood your question. What was your question exactly? I'm, I'm still trying to understand how you break these out. So you know it's always going to be oxygen as a gas, O2 as a gas. Yes. And then you're just going to try and balance out without knowing what X is or trying to figure well, it out. Well, you know what X is because you, you already know how many CLO3s are associated with it. That will tell you to charge on X. CL is always negative one. So then the then the compound can be figured out from there with the chlorine. Some, I feel like something's missing here, Christian, but I'm not sure what it is. I, I get it now. I thought when going through it the first time, I thought we had to try and figure out what X was. So I was no. scrolling through the no. table. No, no, that's not, that. it, it does say here, please consider X to be an imaginary element. The key word there is imaginary. So I understand that the X gets the six plus charge. Where are you getting the nine from again? From the oxygens, because when you've got three times six, that's 18 over here, Courtney. Yes. Which means nine times two is going to be 18 over here. Okay. But if you counted all these oxygens up, three, you know, three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three, plus three. That's, that's 18. CL. The six CLs are, you see, remember the, what the parentheses are? It means there's six of those entire groups. Is that okay? So as long as we balance out the number of those CLO threes, mm -hmm. then we have, then we can write out the full equation. Yes, yes, that's true. But you have to figure out charge on X as well. So you wouldn't. Uh, I'm just trying to figure the order of how I should approach this. So you wouldn't put the coefficient in front of the X on the left side until you figure out 
the right? <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, you'd have to. Well, you'd have to figure out the oxygens in here because the X's balance, the CLs balance. What doesn't balance is the oxygen. So you have got eighteen on the left and uh, just two on the right. So we need to put a nine in front of that one in order to make that eighteen. So it's okay. So that's one X on the left side, right? Yeah. One X and then one X. Okay. Now I didn't have to put the ones in front, but you know, I did just for the sum of coefficients. So it doesn't matter what polyatomic is on the left side, it will always be plus O2. Yes. Or... Yeah, whether it's CLO3 or CLO4. I mean, this is this is in accordance with the soft chalk, okay? Okay. And then you need to figure out the X charge by looking at the number of chlorates or perchlorates, but that's always a negative one charge. It doesn't matter if it's chlorate or perchlorate. That's why the number of those will tell you what the charge on X is. So when it's asking for the char, like, so 29, it's asking for the charge of X. Is that right? No, it's actually asking for the sum of coefficients. I'm sorry. Yeah, I see. What is the sum of coefficients? Okay. And it's 1 plus 1 plus 9. So the answer is being expected there is 11. Okay, thank you. But you wouldn't be able to come up with that answer if you didn't know that you were supposed to get oxygen as a product as well. So this is on like the second to last page of the soft chalk in module six. But not in this way, it doesn't look like this, but it, that gives you the details about what's happening with chlorates and perchlorates. But how do you know the question's going to be on the test? Well, it's on the practice test. So you can expect it to be on the real test too, because they're the same test. All right, any other questions? All right, we'll leave it there. If anybody needs any extra help, that's fine. You can always email me and we can always set up a time to talk if need be. If you have any questions that could be answered by email, I'd be more than happy to do that as well. All right, I'm sorry we're running short on time, but if you want my help, you all you have to do is ask for it. All right, well, thank you very much. No yeah, worries, you. Christian. All right, no worries. Thank you. I'll see you all later. Thank you.